you know, the easy thing is to go over to your local airport and pick away at this thing. So we're always telling guys, you know, burn the boats, beg, borrow, steal the money, and go to one of these big box flight schools, knock it out, you know, as fast as possible because right. going fast also equals cheap. But, you know, Randy's got some other things in the mix here. Hello, aviators. Welcome back to the Pro Pilot Playbook podcast, where we bring you the tips, tricks, hacks, and shortcuts to get you into the cockpit faster and cheaper. I'm your co-host, Sean. And I'm Mike Martin. And uh, for those of you who follow us, it's it's been a little bit. Um, been on a little bit of a summer break here. Yeah, there's the been, height of summer. <laughs> yeah, there's been vacations and it just whatever schedule misalignments between Mike and myself. And it's not just us going on vacation. Um, you know, it's been pretty busy out there anyway. All of these guys in these corporate jets, they're going on vacation too. So it's been busy, uh, but we've got some, you know, I don't know if you were the last show or two, you know, we were mentioning the new app is out there on the app store. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and, and we have been, even though we've been traveling, we've been religiously keeping up on our coaching call every week. So if you, anybody yes. wants to join that, um, we have quite a few students in that now that get live coaching. Very cool every week. So that's been going on in the background. Uh, but, yeah, we're excited with a lot of the things we got planned. And we're uh, – July's over. There's only one of those a year, July. And uh, everybody likes to do everything in July. Right. <laughs> we're ready to get back to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The podcast has suffered a bit, you know, us not recording stuff. But, yeah, the coaching call, that's been going great. It's actually been going gangbusters to the point where we probably need to create two versions of it, folks just getting started and maybe folks at the end – of of their training or or yeah it's kind of taking a, a mind of its own you know they the students are networking within each other and uh uh yeah it's really been and we've developed some relationships with uh uh, uh a bunch of people uh, you know outside of the 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 coaching business so we're really enjoying doing that but uh yeah yeah but we're still gonna stick to our roots here and uh yeah i know always the favorites on the podcast are uh the questions, the user questions, because remember, if you have a question, probably a bunch of our viewers have the question also. And as we mentioned before, we love video questions. Oh, yeah. Yep. And that's what we got today. Uh, we got a video question came in from Randy. Hey, Sean and Mike. Uh, just want to say thanks for your podcast and all the information that's presented there. I've listened to a whole bunch of your episodes and I've gleaned a lot of knowledge from that. Uh, and I've got a question for you, a couple of questions maybe. Um, as I've sifted through some of your podcasts, I've gotten some answers about this, but I, if you have a podcast that answers this question exactly, that would be that would be great. You just kind of guide me in that direction. But um, so I am thinking about going into aviation as a pilot. Um, it would be a career two point for me. I'm almost forty. I've had a a really good career in, in public ed teaching. Um, I'm a high school band director and I've really enjoyed it. I think that's kind of a difficult thing for me is like, I've really enjoyed the job. Um, it's something that I've like given my heart and soul to. Um, but there's, you know, some things over the last several years since COVID that have, um, just, uh, made it less, uh, joyful, less, less exciting for me. Um, and I've always wanted to become a pilot ever since I was a little kid. My grandpa served in the Korean War in the Air Force. I never flew planes, but he talked about airplanes all the time, and so I kind of grew up around that. And um, Anyway, uh, where this is a second career for me, and I'd be jumping in, I have a you know, family, I've got four kids, I'm married, and uh, we make pretty decent income, actually, as a teacher. I'm in, I'm in Utah, and uh, I'm in a really great school district that... Uh, that pays teachers okay, um, and so we live pretty comfortably. Uh, and so the idea of jumping ship on that into a profession, you know, that would potentially over the long term make more money, um, is a little bit scary. Just because uh, there's that that time period. Like if I were to go to ATP, for example, you know, I've got to drop everything, quit my job, um, have no income for an undetermined amount of time. And so I guess my question is. Uh, Besides going to ATP and kind of just dropping everything, 
Um, are there ways that I could uh, get into being a pilot that would be maybe less um, less risky from a financial standpoint, um, and maybe not so brutal on our on our finances? Um, because uh, it'd be kind of hard to go from what we make to making nothing and being really in debt. The only debt we have is our home. Uh, we own all of our vehicles and things like that. Uh, and uh, also one thing to consider too is if I, if I did end up quitting my job, I, I could start any kind of training in the end of May and have three months of full pay and benefits from my job. And right now I'm currently actually working on um, my private license. I found a place that's 15 minutes from my home that's um, a really small airport with just a couple of CFIs and they have been able to get me on. I'm flying. I just started uh, about a month ago and I've been flying almost every single day um, about 20 hours in and uh, anyway so I'll have my private pilot's license by the end of the summer is, is my hope uh, and then uh, I could you know start working on instrument ratings and things like that uh, as I go through the school year this next year so I'm just curious if there's other ways to do it other ways that I could employ my um, my skills as an organizational manager basically you know I've in my job, I, I manage about 25 employees and a budget of anywhere between $300,000 and $500,000 a year. Um, and so I you know, have a lot of those administrative type skills. So I'm wondering if there's any, any way I could use those skills to kind of get into something a little earlier that would make it not so shocking to our financial system, um, but still also not be super slow for getting to the airlines. Because where I am 40 almost, uh, you know, I, I want to make sure there's enough time. Uh, to really get into the career and into the profession. So um, just a couple of things there, if you can answer any of those questions, or if you can point me to a, a podcast where you've already addressed something similar to that, being able to uh, maybe not awesome. quite take such a huge financial hit all at once, um, but still being able to get through fairly quickly, that would be great. And thank you for your content. It's, it's helped a lot up to this point. Well, that is, that's a great question, uh, uh, and that's why Sean and I picked it. Uh, Randall, we appreciate you putting that, that out for us and letting us play that on the podcast. Um, I, got, I got several things to say, and I know Sean does too. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'll, just, I'll let Sean get into the meat and potatoes, but a few things I'd like to say initially is, um, you know, at the beginning of the video, you know, he has some hesitation because he's got a good job. I mean, he makes uh, qu quite a bit of money, it sounds like. He's got the summers off. The hours probably aren't too bad. You know, he's helping these kids. He said he's a band director. I'm sure it's very fulfilling. Um, um, and um, he does mention there's been some changes since COVID that he doesn't necessarily love and, and all of that. Um, but what I would say to him is uh, a lot of people have good jobs. There's a lot of really good jobs out there. Um, but I don't know how many great jobs there are, you know, and uh, uh, um, I, I don't know many pilots that would trade places with a band director. There probably are some, but there isn't. And uh, I don't mean that degradingly or anything, um, but when you really look at the lifestyle of flying these planes around and the amount of off time you have, the people you meet, uh, the places you see, um, the, the fulfillment you get from actually operating a plane, all that kind of stuff, um, there's not many jobs like that. So I highly doubt, based on um, just my experience in the last 30 years dealing in aviation, that he's going to make this step, get a job flying a shiny jet, and then say, oh, man, I wish I was back at the high school. Probably unlikely. So I'd like right. to rest him assured there, um, especially because he has what we call in aviation the bug. So um, mm, he right. sounds like it started at a young age. Um, he's he's always had an affinity for airplanes, you know, starting w with it when he was a little boy. And um, um, that's always going to be there. And, and, you know, as we say over and over again, you only regret the chances you don't take. Um, so mm -hmm. just that alone, if he never does it, will be something that bothers him when he sees an airplane for the rest of his life. So um, um, I'll let Sean, that's my, that's my take on the beginning. Uh, I'll let Sean talk about, you know, what – what he thinks as far as his uh, predicament that he's in. So, well, you, you know, Mike, you and I are always talking about how important it is to, you know, and a lot of this we're, you know, we're, we're pointing towards, you know, the young folks just getting out of high school, don't know what they, what they want to do. And, 
you know, the easy thing is to go over to your local airport and pick away at this thing. So we're always telling guys, you know, burn the boats, beg, borrow, steal the money, and go to one of these big box flight schools, knock it out, you know, as fast as possible because right. going fast also equals cheap. But, you know, Randy's got some other things in the mix here. You know, four wives – or four wives. <laughs> four <laughs> kids. Four kids and a wife. And, uh, you know, and, and it, this, is a, this is a career thing he's doing. Uh, but like you just said, and I think we had a similar question a few years ago uh, from a dentist. And I believe, Mike, you said it the best that, you know, I – we could probably go around to some dental offices and find several dentists that would trade what they're doing to go be a professional pilot. But you're not going to find many professional pilots that are going to trade what they're doing to go be a dentist. That's true. You know, I would say. yes. And, 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 you know, and Randy also mentioned something about, you know, trying to get to a, you know, this career for financial, um, you know, a better financial situation, uh, making the money as a pilot. But, it's not just the money as a pilot, you know, it's, it's also only working 12 days a month in most cases, you know, that's, right. that's a huge lifestyle change. I mean, that's something people take a pay cut to get, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to put this in perspective, I guess, uh, so, so w we watched his question and it's not surprising at all. Um, you know, you have a guy mm -hmm. with a great job as a teacher that wants to transition to aviation. Uh, think about the reverse, how odd that would be if, if you had a pilot watching YouTube videos about band directing at night and, and submitting questions about career changes uh, or, or in, your, in your case, you know, um, a dentist, uh, uh, a pilot uh, watching people get their teeth cleaned on YouTube and then, you know, always having a dream to do that. I, I, I mean, it, it could happen. I'm not saying it, it definitely could happen, but, but when you really put it in perspective, you're probably okay. And, and I'm not, I'm not saying this to poke fun at anything. What, what I'm right. saying is, is he has a hesitation that he's going to regret leaving that job. And I, I just, I, I mean, anything can happen. You know, the market could change dramatically due to, you know, some crazy war or something like that, where he ends up, you know, unemployed uh, in his pilot, you know, I mean, any, any of that could happen. Then, of course, then he would regret leaving a stable job working for the government in essentially in Utah. Uh, but but um, barring that, which is highly unlikely and and, you know, something could go wrong. Um, uh, uh, you know, if you're talking that catastrophic with his current job anyway, but barring that as far as him taking the path, normal economic conditions occur and he gets his licenses and uh, gets a shiny uh, job flying, it's very unlikely he would regret that. Right. Yeah. And, you know, in, in someone's position who's watching this, who, who's doing this career 2.0 type thing, and you're in Randy's position with a, you know, a professional career with decent money and, you know, a, a, quite frankly, a job probably most educators, it, it sounds like most educators would want the position Randy has in that in that industry. Yes. I mean, there's nothing wrong with going to your local airport and picking away at it as long as you Absolutely. do it, you know, properly. And, you know, one of the improper ways to do it is flying once a week and whatnot. But what I find crazy or intriguing about Randy's question is it's almost like he's looking for some validation here. He's, he's, He's actually doing it. He's in a perfect situation. He's got an airport 15 minutes from his house. He says he's been over there daily flying, which is awesome. I mean, that's you're yeah. already checking boxes here. Um, and <laughs> the, I, guess, I guess to add on to what you're doing, Randy, it, first of all, you're doing it right. There's nothing wrong with the way you're doing it. Yes, I'm, I'm watching this thing and I'm thinking, um, you know, as a teacher, you know, most folks, I know some of this has changed across the country, but you probably have summers off or at least part of your summer off. Or yeah, you I think he mentioned that. Yeah, he's going to have his private by the end of the summer. You know, right. Yeah. 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 So, man, you're really in a good position. And, and once he's got the, the money for the training. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got some dough. Uh, you know, you say you don't really have any debt. Um, 
So, and then once the private is done, that's, you know, now, you know, you're getting through all that stuff. You don't know what you don't know type of thing. You know, you start working on your instrument. Uh, things can change a little bit. Um, because now that you have a private certificate working on that instrument and building time towards the commercial, there's some hacks you can put in play. You can link up with somebody else over there at the school that's in a similar position building time, and you guys can split time in the airplane. One of you is right. under the hood, and one of you is a safety pilot, and you fly around, and you're both getting time in the airplane, PIC time in the airplane, and splitting the cost of the airplane, 100% legal in every fashion of regulation or FAA law, whatever. Um, you got that going for you. It, and uh, the other thing is with your... You were mentioning, you know, your administrative position, you know, you're you're used to managing people and, and books and whatnot. You know, you might present that. I don't know what kind of outfit you're dealing with at this airport that's only 15 minutes from you, which is, man, that just blows my mind. You know, some people have to drive 45 minutes to get to uh, a subpar airport for flight training. Um, right. I mean, you got a good thing going here. It, yeah. You might you might be able to present something to not only the FBO or the flight school that the FBO operates out of, uh, maybe go to the, the airport manager. Um, you know, you might be able to work out something. They may, may need help, uh, you know, some type of, I don't know, office type thing or something like that, that, you could help them out with and, and yeah that's what i was kind of thinking yeah trading trading some you know flight time for that yeah yeah and then once he becomes an instructor he'll be getting paid um he could even still probably keep his flying or his uh, teaching job even if you know it, 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 maybe he times it so he gets his cfi right in the spring and then when summer rolls around he can instruct all summer and still draw that salary you know kind of double dip so to speak you know i mean uh, there's a lot of potential because he's got that job as a, you know, as a, um, a teacher. And, uh, you know, I, I had a couple friends, I'm sure you hold the, heard the old analogy, they're teachers, and they always say there's three reasons why I'm a teacher, June, July, and August. <laughs> 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 but, uh, I mean, that's yeah. golden. And that's the best flying weather of the whole uh, uh, of the whole year, you know, and Utah is a great place, uh, great weather out there. It's a beautiful, um, beautiful state. Right. So, um, yeah, I southern, think some, southern Utah in the summertime instructing that, you know, let's hope they got some cirruses with the air conditioners. <laughs> but, yeah, it does get hot. But, you know, <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, uh, it, sometimes you need some you need somebody to tell you how good something is right in front of you. But mm -hmm. I would say to Randall, this is a, a really he's blessed for this setup right here to make this transition. Now, there is going to be a point where he's going to have to, you know, uh, make a decision and he's going to have to walk away from that job, you know, um, um sure. and, uh, that's going to be, that time will come, but, but it, that decision is going to be easier after he's already got a CFI and he's got, you know, a really good feel for, for the market and what's happening and all that sure. stuff. Uh, much more uh, clarity uh, it, it, with everything. You know, the other thing, uh, I keep calling him Randy, but that's how he signed yeah, his yeah. emails. You're saying Randall. Oh, yeah, I got gotcha. you. I don't know what you prefer. Sorry, Randall. Uh, <laughs> Randy. <laughs> uh, the other thing I just thought of is, you know, if you do have, you know, some uh, some extra cash in the bank, um, I don't – they may already offer this at your flight school. Uh, sometimes this is not upfront and advertised. But if you – and I wouldn't just bring this up to – you know, some kid working the desk there, uh, you know, doing the paperwork and making sure you hand you the keys for the airplane as you rent. I would try to get in touch with the owner or the manager of the FBO. You may present them an offer. Uh, and, and we talk about this in the course, maybe in a little bit more detail, actually, but present them an offer for block purchasing block time. So instead of just going out to the airport, flying your 1.2, and then you pay for it, you schedule your next lesson, and then you, whatever, you could buy a block of 20, 30 hours up front at once, you know, and yeah. I'll, here's the way I would handle this. I would negotiate all this out. Okay, yeah, we'll give you, uh, yeah, if you buy 20 hours, I'll give you, I'll give you 10% off. Okay, and then, you know, whatever, hash out the best deal you can, 
And then after all that's done, the next question is you say, well, what if I pay in cash? And then be quiet. Don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> you might get you might get a different number after yeah. that. Yeah, you might. You never know. Uh, the other thing I had in my notes here is uh, this guy, you got to say, Sean, he's got corporate pilot, uh, flight department manager written all over him, doesn't he? I mean, he carries himself super yeah. professional, you know. He's, Absolutely. He's, got, he's submitting a video question with a with a tie. He's also, he's, he's got the look, he's running, he's running, managing people already. You know, he's a department manager. I mean, this guy, yeah, uh, I was already thinking I used to work for him somewhere <laughs> or maybe you will someday. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. never know. Uh, so yeah, uh, the sky's the limit, uh, literally, uh, for, for Mr. Brady here. And we really appreciate his, uh, well, actually I got one question. more thing yeah. I just thought of. Yeah. Here's the other thing. After you get that commercial, um, you got your commercial instrument, you know, hurry up and get that CFI done. And, uh, you know, as far as the big box schools, yeah. um, it, you know, it doesn't have to be one of the big box things like ATP or American Flyers. It, you got these summers off. You could have this. You, know, you got to schedule early. You can't do this right before it, you want, you know, the month before you're trying to do it. There there are some mom and pop type of uh and we've mentioned this before on the program and we've been talking about it in the coaching call here a lot lately but there's some mom and pop uh size schools doing accelerated flight training actually accelerated far beyond what atp can do yeah and that's when we were talking about you know the 10-day instrument course the five-day commercial um it's like a seven-day cfi yeah. and there's some some prerequisites you have to show up to these things with, you know, you like you're written done. And if you're doing the, uh, instrument, they want you to have the 50 hours across country completed, but you could schedule this, these things out for, you know, after you get this private knocked out, yeah, you Next could summer. totally knock out your instrument and commercial, uh, just build time. Cause you still need that 1500 hours to get any kind of real job anyway, uh, especially if you're going to the airlines. Um, but, you know, you could be building time all the all school year, uh, this coming school year, and then have this thing scheduled for next summer. Um, you know, we can it, it, you can email us back. We can put the names of some of these things out there or yeah. make this an advertisement for those schools. Uh, they're mentioned in our program, though. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you could go knock out your instrument commercial next summer easy, uh, real quick. Uh, they're a little more expensive than just – what you could do picking away at it at your local airport, but um, that's great advice. Yeah, and then after you get your CFI, here's what I wanted to say, uh, Randy. You got a captive audience at your school. Um, I don't know if these are. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if these are. It doesn't matter how old they are. Actually, it might be easier with high school kids. But yeah, once you start flight instructing, you could have uh, you know a full docket of students. To where, you know, it's quite typical when you're a CFI, especially when you're starting off till you figure out what's going on. It's it's there's quite a lot of sitting around the airport waiting for students to wander through the door. And, you know, there could be a yeah. senior instructor there or a couple guys ahead of you that, you know, kind of, uh, you know, take the students before you get to them, especially when you're new. But if it's somebody that's there for you, that's a different story. You know, that senior instructor doesn't get to just nab up somebody that, you know, you told to come by. So right. you, you could have students from your school coming over there to take lessons with you. Totally. You know? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You could totally do that. That'd be a great lead source for them. And, uh, you know, they already trust you as a teacher and they know about oh, you. Yeah. And, you know, half those kids are probably interested in learning to fly. So, yeah, that's a... That's a great idea. Very good advice. Yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, we really appreciate everybody watching. We appreciate our viewers. You, I don't want to think our lag from not uh, sending anything means we're slacking off or anything. We've got lots of great things planned. We've got some uh, uh, our first uh, uh, podcast we're going to do off-site where we're going to actually travel to a flight school. We're doing that this week. Um, we've got a lot of interviews. We're working on some higher-profile interviews, too. Um, so we've got a lot of, lot of things in there. We've got our ProPilot Playbook app in the Apple App Store. You can download. It's really nice. 
Um, and then, of course, we got all our other products, not just the course, the coaching, which is wonderful, uh, one-on-one coaching, consulting, all that stuff on our website. So check all that out. And please pound the like button and subscribe to the channel. That really helps us out. I know it's, it gets old, but it really does help us out. So thanks, yep. thanks everybody, and I uh, hope everyone else is having a great summer. If you got a question for us, you can email us at podcast at propilotplaybook.com. See you next week.